Are you rolling? Nope. Wow, it looks crazy. Oh, what, the, the lens getting bigger and smaller? What do you got there, Quinn? What's in your hand? I have a present for, for Brian. Yeah. So tonight we're doing a little valve cleaning, a little carbon clean up here. So Let me have it. You go, buddy. You just get get scrubbing with that. Surprised you didn't get me a toothbrush from CVS. Here you go. Show the show the world how you clean. This that. is how you do. <laughs> You just go like this. Very good. You keep going. And by next week, I might be done with this one. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, yeah. <laughs> I when said we weren't gonna film this, but you know what? We are. Yeah. Yep. We're doing it with today. power tools. Yeah, the right way. Pan over there. Ooh. Yeah, we don't mess around around here. Oh, oh me too. <laughs> <laughs> crazy with this Did you get one that's poopy enough? Give me an intake too. Don't you go mix matching now. Dude, intake's giant. <laughs> it's like your left and right nut. Tell me when you're ready. I'm recording, I've been recording. Oh, fudge. So here we have two valves. One is intake, one is exhaust. You could tell them very easily by the size because the intake is always much bigger than exhaust. And our intake is much cleaner. Why is the back of our intake valve cleaner? Because when you inject fuel through the intake manifold, it cleans the back of the valves. When it's burning up and his exhaust coming out, there's no fresh fuel getting sprayed on the back here. This is why direct injection engines have a lot of carbon buildup because you're not spraying fuel on the back of the intake valves anymore. So they spray walnuts on it to clean them off, but we're not going to do that. Anyways, um, we want to get the carbon buildup off of here. One, because it adds weight, could make the engine more prone to detonation if some of the carbon gets hot spots on it. But, oh man, you're really going out there, buddy. I'm so, get you guys in the shot. On the back of the uh, exhaust valves, we get a lot more buildup because of that. There's no fuel being, out, being added to that, and this can prevent the valve from seating properly as it closes. So we want we want to make sure that we really clean these off. We're going to clean them entirely, anyways, and then we're going to lap them. So that's the other reason why we want to get all the loose carbon off, and then we're just going to lap them lightly so they ensure a nice, clean seal while we have everything apart. Can you explain lapping a little bit? Uh, it's like when you're like driving around a track, like <laughs> repeatedly. No, go, we'll, go. we'll talk about lapping once we once we get to it. Okay. But yeah. Hello. So we are actually going to use a bench grinder uh, with a wire wheel on it to clean the carbon off, so Ryan doesn't have to sit here for a week with his little hand brush. Thank God. You got to be careful with this because it's going to want to grab the valve and jam it down underneath there. Um, I've done this a few times and I've definitely dropped valves and they go flying. So we're just going to keep a lot of strength here, like a lot of sturdy support and just get all that carbon off. It's not going to hurt the valves, the valves are very hard in steel, but we want to make sure that we get all that loose carbon up. Whoa! You got to press hard to get the, the loose shit here in the middle because there's an indent. It's not flush so you really got to kind of... A little, a little excess force in it. Here we go. Better. Now the scary part is the size. For this center section that's actually indented, you saw me like really pushing hard and I wanted to grab it, but that's the only real way to like get enough pressure in there to, to grind that out and then you can see the backs here nice and clean nice and smooth so once we're ready to uh, put everything back together we'll do light lapping just to like get everything flush and then we're good so now I get the fun job of cleaning up all the residue from the head gasket
not really sure why someone would paint a head black because as soon as it starts chipping up, you see the silver underneath. If you're gonna paint it, just paint it silver. Brown. Brown. We know it wasn't you. I had my camera put away for the second time. <laughs> I know, sorry. <laughs> do I still have my job? No. No. Ah. Yeah, you, you did a good job on these valves. Oh, thank you, Matthew. Let's take a look at these. Good as new. Shannon's got Shannon? focus. Are you focused, Shannon? Yes. Yes, she is now. Yeah? How's she look? Looks good. So, intake and exhaust valves are now clean. You lowered your compression a little bit. Lowered my compression, lost a little Hirschberg. But, you know, I feel good about it. I feel good about running this now. This was a quick segment. Uh, next segment, we'll show you how to lap the valves. But once again, it's like one o'clock in the morning and we ran out of time, so. Take a look at the head. Oh man, whoever cleaned that did a real good job. Someone did a real nice job, I don't know who. But I came back and this thing was looking spick and span. There was all that janky paint. Yep. And that looks much better now. It's almost ready for paint, but in the meantime, I'm going to take a little wire wheel here and get inside these ports and clean out all the carbon. On the exhaust side, is it too dark, Matt? Yeah, it's a little dark. It's a little dark, but it looks like poo-poo in there. So I'm gonna clean this head up. We'll lap the valves in the next video. And then we can start assembling it again, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Ooh. All right, guys. That is it for this one. See you in the next one.